A face-dealing demon is on its way to midnight to make bad things happen, and other interesting events. On this, the first of my two-night special episode of Dolly Debauchery's Super Creepy Horror Show, Midnight Texas Edition. Well, let's start with the fact that Manfred's Zilda RV has overheated, and he's stranded out in the middle of nowhere, so that's not a very good start to the episode. Whatever will he do? Here's another fun fact uh, concerning the very quickly thinning veil and the way the Midnighters are reacting to it. Turns out that when he's not in tiger form, the Reverend is actually a strict vegetarian. Well. Things have changed for the Reverend, too, and Olivia catches him eating a very, very bloody rare steak, which they both know is probably not a good sign, given that when you're a vegetarian, you kind of like to stick to the green leafies. Speaking from experience. Funny side note, I found out that I was pregnant with my son because I started eating bloody red steak. So, there's a possibility my child could be a vampire or demonic, I don't know. We haven't had him tested for either of those things yet. Fiji hates it enough that she's being tormented by this demon, but now the residents of Midnight, just not just the Midnighters, but also the other residents of Midnight are starting to be affected, and that does not bode well with Fiji. You see, she's a light, sweet spirit, but when you mess with the people that she loves, she becomes quite a bit less light and sweet. I mean, we saw her throw a car, so let's be honest with ourselves. The girl, when she has a bad day, she knows how to have a really bad day. Speaking of Fiji, Parisa Fitzhenley followed me on Twitter, and I was super excited because Fiji's my favorite character, and so now I'm like totally fangirling over that, especially since she likes some of my posts, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Because that's just how social media works these days, kids. In other news, Lem wants to eat everything with a pulse. The thinning veil is not playing well with our resident vampire, and this is causing waves between he and Olivia, and if you watched the last episode, you know that there's trouble in paradise already because of the conversation they had about, hey, dude, I love you, but I don't want to be a vampire. Meanwhile, Lem would be happy just to spend the rest of eternity with Olivia. So there's already waves, but now his basically wanting to eat her is definitely causing a lot more relationship problems, which is understandable. Is a vampire. She likes having blood. We all like having blood. And not being vampires. Unless you want to be a vampire. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be a vampire. Olivia does not want to be a vampire. On a more depressing note, on this episode, we find out exactly how Zilda decided to exit one realm and go to the next. If you remember from previous episodes, Zilda was diagnosed with cancer. Inoperable, untreatable, uh, there was nothing that could be done for her. So, in classic Zilda fashion, and on her own terms, she decided to make her exit with a handful of pills and a cup of gin. Because Zilda gonna do what Zilda's gonna do. Of course, this also ended up tethering Zilda to the green RV, which she chose because that was the home that she raised Manfred in. They were traveling gypsies. So from the time he was a little boy and his mother basically gave him to her because she knew Zilda would understand him. His mother's not psychic clairvoyant, couldn't raise him, so she gave him to his grandmother. They, you know, he spent his life traveling the country with her in that green RV. She tethered herself to it so that she could be with him and help guide him. I always kind of wondered because, you know, here he had this rental house, but like he still had the RV and I'm like, okay, maybe he's going to move on. I don't know. But um, I never really, it never clicked with me though. Oh, wait a minute. The only time he ever talks to Zilda is in the RV. Well, it's because she's tethered to said RV until her unfinished business is completed. Her unfinished business is to get Manfred to midnight so that he can basically help save the world. So, 
Once the RV breaks down and Manfred can no longer move forward literally in it, uh, they have a nice long talk and Zilda is able to convince Manfred to go back to Midnight and help his Midnight family. Um, initially, of course, it's not the way it is. Initially, it is the RV breaks down and he decides to hot foot it, literally, too, because this is West Texas. It's warm and it's a desert. It's hot. So he's hiking his way four hours back to a gas station that he remembered seeing. Well, things happen. Stuff happens. He and Zilda have a talk and then he realizes, wait a minute. You're not tethered to the RV anymore. And she's like, that's because you finally decided to go back to midnight and do what you're supposed to do in the first place. So I don't have to stay here anymore. I can move on. So we're led to, of course, believe that Zelda has moved on. Although I'm really hoping that, because I've got my fingers crossed for a season two, I love this show. And so I'm hoping that if there is a season two, we'll get to see Zelda again. Because I love that character. She's just fun and hilarious and awesome. And I would really like to see her again. Zelda tells Manfred, you know, your ride's here. It's time for me to go. Time for you to go back and help your friends, your family save the world because that's why you're here. Well, earlier in the episode, a truck driver got his face snatched by the man has no name demon, as I've decided to start calling him. And uh, so he becomes a truck driver and he's driving, driving, driving. Manfred hitchhikes with said truck driver. Do, 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 do. Truck driver, you know, decides to try and steal Manfred's face. Manfred knows what's up because he can read its mind. Oh, then that doesn't go so well. So then, of course, Manfred ends up in side dump truck part of said dump truck with a pile of dead faceless bodies because the truck driver is a demon who is on his way to offer a death offering to the demon that is trying to take over Midnight. <sighs> hey, remember how at the beginning they showed you that Fiji had tiny jars of everybody in Midnight's hair? We find out why that is tonight. And of course, it's not anything bad because this is Fiji. It's actually a way to protect them and help them. And we find out how that works in this episode, but you're gonna have to watch it to find out. So I'm not gonna tell you. All I'm gonna tell you is that Fiji uses her magic to help her family with their biological particle-ness. It's a good thing that she had that stuff that she made too, because this uh, lover's quarrel that Lem and Olivia have is a tad bit more than just a lover's quarrel. Like, furniture and bodies get thrown, and it gets really, really, really hairy there towards the end, you know, with Olivia stabbing Lem with a stake. She doesn't kill him, but she definitely ouches him quite a bit. But it's just because it's the, the bad... Juju in Midnight is really, really, really affecting them, especially Lem. And, you know, it's like he's, you know, got his heart broken. So as opposed to getting all sulky and mopey and, you know, like vague booking about it on Facebook, he decides to get into, a, you know, a physical altercation with Olivia. And if you've watched the show, you know that Olivia is not one that anybody wants to get into to a physical altercation with be you a soup or a human, the girl's tough, that, and she's got silver bullets. So, I mean, it's like, hey, you know, either way, she sort of kind of has at least a level hand, if not an upper hand. Of course, Fiji is able to stop that fight, but everybody's butt hurt. But they've got to get over being butt hurt because just as the butt hurtedness starts, Manfred shows up with a face-stealing demon and a dump truck full of dead bodies. So, they gotta deal with that issue. This episode ends with a demon that feeds on death, but also uh, creates bad emotions, putting its sights on an already very vulnerable creek. She's sad, she's depressed. She, her entire life, basically, to her was a lie. Uh, she's lost what she feels like everything. Manfred's left, and so she's like, well, what's the point? And so, like, this demon is able to feed on those emotions. And um, the creek is pretty much on the edge at this point of making the decision to end her life. 
help arrives just in time in the form of Manfred in a pile of dead bodies. I mean, you got to take the help that you get, right? Even if it stinks and has, you know, faceless dead people all around it. All that said, this is still the beginning of a very bad night in this tiny West Texas town. All right, well, that's the first episode of the Midnight Texas Two Night Special, so tune into my next episode to find out what happens on the second night of the Two Night Midnight Texas Special.